to the Geospatial Intelligence Podcast. My name is Aybar Söztuna and I'm the founder and CEO of Geospatial Intelligence Institute and Master of Science in Geospatial Intelligence candidate at the Johns Hopkins University. Geospatial Intelligence, an Emerging Field. We'll be talking everything about it. Let's begin. Geospatial term was first used in the early 1990s, derived from geospatial. It is a word invented for the phenomenon of explaining the computed environment, further detailing the geographic and spatial relationships. In geospatial, the geo has been taken from the word geographic. Whereas the word special here translates into describing special relationships, entities, and objects that fall under computer programming and geography categories. In the 1990s, the Geographic Information System, GIS, was introduced into software and vector databases. Earlier, geographic scientists referred to the invention as geographic information science. It wasn't until 2005 that the scientists began working progressively in geospatial science, introducing numerous advances and capabilities. With new advancements, the science field was also renamed Geospatial Information System. As geospatial technology is a very new technology still in its developmental phases, It may see numerous changes made by the government, educational institutes, and the corporate world. Therefore, the exact definition of the technology can differ from organization to organization, based on their preference for the technology's usage. Geospatial can be generally described as digital geography that utilizes numerous datasets and presents a visual map of the world. It bridges the gap between physical and human geography by bringing them together in a digital environment. This combination is then used to conduct special analysis based on physiography and sociocultural dynamics. Geospatial has expanded into a much more massive technology since its introduction. Geospatial is a technological science field that tends to remodel the application of digital geography, engineering, science, and mapping. The organization that holds the right to bring changes in geospatial's definition is the Federal Geographic Data Committee. If the organization allows changes to be made to the technology's definition, it would also require changes in the United States Code Title 6 300 and 43 and 10, 467. Doing so would cause changes in governing the geospatial requirements and utilization. The technology could then be adapted to various fields, breaking the limitations placed on the technology based on its usage for military purposes. This allowance of the technology's usage in different fields would lead the users to organize their own ontology when they integrate data retrieved through geospatial means. The United States Department of Defense incorporated mapping technology for national security in 1972. 
It was the year when the Defense Mapping Agency was introduced into the Department of Defense on the 1st of July 1972. The main purpose behind doing so was to merge mapping, charting, and geodesy. The Defense Mapping Agency emerged into the Department of Defense on 1st of July 1972 to increase efficiencies and economies by bringing the mapping, charting, and geodesy, MC and G, activities into a single organization. The newly established organization was now responsible for retrieving Air Force's Aeronautical Chart and Information Center operations alongside the United States Naval Hydrographic Offices Charting Services, Army Map Services, and Oceanography. Initially, DMA was responsible for providing MCNG support to the Secretary of Defense, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the military departments, and other Department of Defense components. The provision of support from DMA included the production of maps and charts and their global distribution. The positioning and digital data were also included for strategic military operations. DMA was further merged into NIMA, which is National Imagery and Mapping Agency, in October 1996. National Imagery and Mapping Agency was established to bring the United States efficient imagery capabilities and geospatial technology into a unified agency. This merging of two different but interrelated fields was done on the 1st of October 1996. NIMA faced numerous difficulties retrieving data using geospatial means such as Desert Storms and Operations Desert Shield. Following these difficulties, NIMA decided to merge Defense Mapping Agency and Defense Dissemination Program Office, National Photographic Interpretation Center, and Central Imagery Office. The merger wasn't just restricted to these four organizations as Central Intelligence Agency, Defense Intelligence Agency, National Reconnaissance Office and Defense Airborne Reconnaissance Office were also partially incorporated into the merged organization. NIMA operated progressively and created visual geospatial data and imagery, allowing the applicator to view a region's inaccessible territories. It provided great support for resolving boundary disputes that had occurred internationally. NIMA was renamed NGA on the 24th of November 2003, following the signature of President George W. Bush on the Defense Authorization Bill of 2004. This bill required changing NIMA's title from National Geospatial Intelligence Agency to NGA. This change was brought into the title after considering the advancement and newly manufactured instrument by NGA. The evolution of NGA and its expanded merges were also considered when changing the title. The United States Defense Intelligence Agency's formation accelerated after the situation in Southeast Asia got worse. In the early 1960s, the United States had already spent millions of dollars after sending numerous advisory personnel to the conflicted area. Despite the United States efforts, there were little to no differences in the chaotic situation in Vietnam. The acceleration of war in Vietnam mirrored the lacking that United States military organizations did have at the time. Numerous issues in the military programming conducted by the United States in Vietnam. The United States ranged from structural to leadership errors. DIA was concerned about its lacking being exposed in the Asian region, for which it was already under much criticism. Congress and other notable United States policymakers suggested abolishing the defense agency. After the Vietnamese War ended in 1975, 
the DIA began working on removing every error that caused the organization to face massive backlash. To be efficient, the DIA worked hard in the fields of technology for data collection purposes. For this motive, DIA invested its workforce and dedication into advancing the technology of GIS, which turned into a new technological science field named Geospatial Science. After the September 11 attacks, NIMA contributed major efforts to Homeland Security Services. It enhanced its operations by developing advanced technological equipment in geospatial technology to secure American citizens both from the U.S. and overseas. They also started using geospatial services to ensure the well-being of armed forces operating against territories in Iraq and Afghanistan. In the attacks of September 11, the World Trade Center was one of the terrorists' targets. The attacks shocked the country and devastated a city that was once thriving and threat-free. After the attacks, the New Yorkers started feeling unsafe. They had a constant fear of being attacked by the terrorists again. The authorities were concerned about the U.S. economy as the attack was carried out on the nation's biggest financial district. When the World Trade Center collapsed and turned into debris, the teams of engineers, rescuers and authorities turned to GIS tools application. The teams worked on inspecting other buildings in New York to strengthen their shock impact, which could have taken extensive time without using GIS. Senator Ahern decided to make a collaboration with the geospatial company titled as LinksPoint. This collaboration resulted in the formation of GIS applications through PDA systems which are installed in every smartphone in today's modern era. Doing so helped the engineers in having a visual map of the entire city. After having the city's map, they started working on its infrastructure, making it terrorist attacks free, flood free and earthquake shock free. The engineers were able to retrieve sufficient data to work on implementing safety measurements to help the city avoid facing such a devastating situation again in the future. The American aviation system was equipped with advanced imaging data retrieval equipment alongside efficient tools to understand the data. This geospatial technology advancement prevented terrorist activities from taking place against the United States. After the attack, the United States defense authorities understood the importance of GIS and geospatial imaging. Although the technology was relatively new, it was used to fight off terrorists in Afghanistan and Iraq. Using the geospatial equipment, the U.S. forces could locate the terrorists responsible for the attack and bring justice to the victims' families. This was when the advancement in geospatial technology was at its peak, with its application in Iraq's freedom war and war against the terrorists in Afghanistan. It helped the United States forces to locate where the terrorists were hiding and to attack the terrorists before being attacked by them. Geospatial imaging didn't only help map out the terrorist locations, but it also helped locate the injured and provide help to the areas desperately in need of help. If you would like to have a variety of sources, feel free to follow geospecialintelligence.org. My name is Aybars Östuna and this is the Geospatial Intelligence Podcast.